Here it is at long last, version 3 of the loudspeaker testing module from Dayton Audio. So if you've been cringing at the thought of putting your trust in questionable specs or perhaps that mystery sub you've been hanging on to needs some ID, this thing may become your problem solver. Let's begin with an important story, one that I've seen play out more times than I can count, and this particular instance revolves around a guy named Joe. That's him right there. He recently bought a sub, and wanting to get the most out of it, he contacted Audio Dynamics to have me design his enclosure. As a matter of course, my first order of business is to grab the TS parameters from the manufacturer's website, validate them and add them to my design software database. Let's talk about that for a moment, because if we get this wrong, we get everything wrong. As I've already mentioned in my TS Parameters Explained series, there is a strict mathematical relationship governing what these numbers can and cannot be. We won't dive into that here, but as a simplified example of what I'm talking about, consider the following. Let's say that we have a parameter called radius, another one called diameter, and another one called circumference. Right away, we can establish that the diameter of a circle is twice its radius. That is a mathematical relationship. So if we have a verified radius of 5 centimeters, the diameter has to be 10 centimeters. There's no two ways about it. We can also establish that the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius, or 2 times pi times half the diameter. Either way, it's the same result. The point here is that once you specify a value for any one of these, the mathematical relationships between them constrain the remaining parameters to specific values as well. So now let's say that we are given these parameters. Can we validate them? Well, let's see. The radius can't be what it is if the diameter is correct, but it checks out if the circumference is correct. The diameter can't be what it is if either the radius or the circumference is correct. And the circumference can be what it is if the diameter is correct, but it checks out if the radius is correct. And since we have no direct method of establishing which, if any of these are correct, all that we know for a fact is that there is a discrepancy preventing all three of them from coexisting. And this is where software like Basebox Pro from Harris Technologies really comes into its own as it performs these checks on the fly and lets you know if any of the figures you've entered contradict one another. This is key. In fact, if you're not validating your TS parameters, you're not doing your job as a designer. Anyhow, back to the story. So I went to look up the parameters for the sub that Joe had purchased and right away, things were amiss. There was a dual 1 and a dual 2 ohm version of the driver somehow sharing the same electrical damping and efficiency values, the units for the mechanical compliance weren't even defined, and once everything was entered into Basebox Pro, well, see for yourself. You cannot in good faith design based on this. In fact, my software wouldn't even accept it. And I communicated all this to Joe, who in turn took the issue up with the manufacturer. A week later, after his third attempt, someone had finally gotten back with him only to assure him that the parameters were correct. In other words, asserting that the proverbial circle has a diameter of something other than half its radius. They also mentioned that the parameters were listed in series, inadvertently suggesting that each individual coil would have had to measure 0.45 and 0.9 ohms respectively, which of course they didn't. And if that doesn't inspire concern, I should also point out that this isn't some off-brand sub we're talking about. I've seen it featured in dozens of installs over the past couple of years, which only begs the question of how were all those enclosures modeled. Any designer worth their commission would have spotted this right away, so have people been getting taken for a ride? Well, obviously I can't answer that without jumping to conclusions, but I can tell you what Joe did to settle things once and for all. He used a woofer tester. Someone had lent him the original WT3, which after some back and forth I helped him set up and calibrate on his modern Windows machine. Problem solved, he sent me the parameters, everything checked out and the resulting design gave him better performance than he ever thought possible. The bottom line here is that being able to independently check the properties of your speakers is becoming a must. Companies like the one Joe had dealt with are becoming the norm, especially in the car audio market. And they will dig their heels in to insist that their parameters are correct despite the math or even the notion that someone may actually check these figures independently. So, let this story sink in as we have a look at the latest TS parameter acquisition tool from Dayton Audio. Right away, you'll notice that rather than a plastic USB dongle like its predecessors, this one is built into an aluminum housing and all the cables are now detachable. So there's a USB 2.0 type B socket in the back and a pair of jacks for the test leads along the front panel. In fact, they're just your standard banana plug terminals, so you could easily make your own probes if the ones that come with the unit don't suit your needs. There's also a pair of these classic turret-style prongs. 
these are actually the leads for the built-in calibration resistor. That aside, the biggest difference you'll find with the device itself is that it has 20 times the frequency resolution of the DATS version 2, so says the literature, and more power to drive the speaker under test for greater separation between the data and the noise floor. Everything else is more or less the same, right down to the familiar user interface and the measurement workflow. So let's take it for a quick spin, and if you've never used one of these before, stand by for the crash course. Right away, here's everything that it comes with. As you can see, there is no software. Instead, you get a card with an address that redirects you to the Parts Express product page where you can download the DATS version 3 application. So you'll obviously want to do that first and plug the box into the computer with a supplied USB cable. The first time you do that, it'll be recognized as a generic USB audio device. Make sure that this is what your default input and output device is set to and that your playback and recording levels are both at 100%. You may also want to check that your sampling rate is set to 44.1 kHz, 16-bit stereo. Launch the DAT software and perform your two-step calibration procedure. To do that, you just plug in the probes, short them out, and under the impedance analyzer menu select the test lead calibration. Afterwards, attach them to the prongs and under the same menu select impedance calibration. Now, you're ready to test some speakers. And for this example, I snagged an old prototype from work to serve as our mystery driver. So just wire that up, and if you have a vented back pole, find some way to let it breathe. I like to use these hard foam blocks, which I think started out as a mat to go over a workbench, but then a table saw happened. Anyway, click on that measure free air parameters button, stand by for the sweep, and there's half your data. For the rest, I generally use the added mass method since all it takes is a non-ferrous object of known weight, like these brass cylinders. And all you have to do is measure the effective piston area, so from the outer edge of the surround on this side to the inner edge on the other. Enter that in, weigh the added mass, including the adhesive, blue tack in my case, enter that in as well, stick the weight onto the piston as symmetrically as you can and click the measure VAS button. There, you're done. And I can just about guarantee that if you enter these parameters into Basebox Pro, nothing is going to come up red. More importantly, now you have the benefit of knowing that whatever enclosure you design based on these figures is as accurate as the predictive capabilities of your design software. Last thing you ever want to do is sit there wondering what could have been had someone designed your enclosure according to the parameters that actually define the electromechanical properties of your drivers. So comment down below with your experience dealing with shady documentation while I go test the TS parameters for these little tank bands which we'll talk about in the next video. Cheers!